everyone. Welcome to Stampin' Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs. And yes, tonight we are live. I guess you saw that Tom dancing, getting into the groove a little bit earlier. Hey, Tom, how are you? Come say hello. <laughs> hey, everybody. Whoops. Microphone up. Hey, <laughs> how are you doing, crafters? How are you? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know either. <laughs> Tom has not had any fruit salad tonight. I, I promise you. A little bit off and always walls. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's great to see you here tonight. So we had mixed reviews. We actually had a lot of people that really liked our premiere video that we did last Thursday. They liked that we were chatting in the comments. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Different. So nice. We're going to throw those in every once in a while. But uh, most of our most of our lives will be live, and occasionally we'll we'll throw in a premiere so that Tom and I can get goofy and chat with you in the comments because it's all fun. So, well, tonight, Tom, we're gonna do something fun. I know you love this new die set, the new lots of dots. Yeah. And I'm gonna be using that again tonight, and I'm actually mixing some bundles together tonight, so I'm kind of excited about that too. And so many of our friends out there have this other bundle but even if they don't have it they can use something completely different that they already have in their stash so with that being said let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do tonight so tonight we are going to be using the new lots of dots die set i know it's sold out i thought i bought enough and you know sometimes it's really hard to nail this thing i'm finding because i have dies back there you know that i ordered the same amount of and we still haven't run through the first batch. And then I have other dies back there that I thought, I don't know how this is going to go, where we've reordered five, six, 10, 20 times. So it's really hard. But if you didn't get this die set, you can always put your name on the wait list. And um, we've already reordered everything from our new release. So hopefully they're busy working away on it and we'll get those items back in stock. But for those of you who did, and I know thousands of you did, I do want to show you this. And even if you're waiting for your order or you get this die set a little bit later, you're going to love it. Now, um, I also am going to be using the new floral, curved floral bundle. <laughs> I can't even talk. The curved floral layering bundle, this one right here, the one with the big curved die. And um, if you didn't get a chance to watch last week's video, let me just give you a quick peek here. This is the card we did in our premiere video where Tom and I were chatting with all of you guys. And I used the lots of dots circle and that's this die right here so i added that into this card oh my gosh if you're watching on a big screen that card is like seven feet tall let me just back up just a little bit there okay so now you're watching on an iphone it's a postage stamp right you can't win so this is the die that i used for last thursday's card and then this was the one that i used for tuesday night i did this using that same curved floral banner set this one here so tonight we're going to use one of these but we're actually going to use this one because i know a lot of you were looking at this and going ah, what i don't even get how to use it we might even be able to use this one too so maybe we'll use them together all right i'll put those aside and i just wanted to show these to you again i know i've got some cards to get out and tom we did promise since we were on a premiere that we would give this card away at the end of the show tonight 
Yes. So this one is coming to one of you. All you have to do if you're new here is leave a comment and you're automatically entered into the drawing to win this card. And I'm also going to be giving away the card that I make tonight. So hopefully that will be somewhat good. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Well, let's start. Yes. Yes. People are asking me, me, me if I'm going to be in Columbus. So Tom, let's go to the front camera. I want to tell you guys that um, the weekend of the 21st, I think it's that Friday and Saturday, I am going to be in Columbus, Ohio at Create. That's a Simon Says Stamp event. And let me tell you something. Simon Says Stamp puts on amazing events. And this one is probably one of the best in the business because for those of you First of all, there was a class that you could sign up for. I am going to be teaching that class with my bestie, Jennifer McGuire. She and I are teaching together, but I'm going to be there all weekend. And so is Jennifer. I have a make and take booth and you can come and sit down and make my cards and get this to get in for a full day is only $15. And there are, I want to say there's over 30 make and takes every day on Friday and on Saturday. And it's $15 a day to get in for either Friday or Saturday. And if you want to do both days, I believe it's $25 to do both days. And the good news is the make and takes change the second day. So if you make all the make and takes the first day and you come back the second day, we all have new ones for you to make. So I've never did it. I've never done an event where you make so many things and you can pick and choose exactly what you make. So Maybe you'll really like my first card and you'll want to make it. But maybe the next day you'll go, oh, no, I've already made that kind of card. I definitely don't want to miss this, this, and this. And you can go make other cards. And depending on how quick of a crafter you are, you could possibly get them all in. So that'll be in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm going live with Heidi on the Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel on Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern time, noon Central Time. And Heidi and I are going to talk all about it. And I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of what I'm going to be doing. And ugh, I can't wait. So, and I'm driving there. I'm in Wisconsin and I'm driving there. It's about an eight hour drive for me. I'm telling you, it is worth the two days to go. So just had to get that out there because people were asking. Okay. And there's, and the thing is, it doesn't sell out. I mean, come, just don't even worry about it. You just come and get a ticket at the door. It's great. Okay. So today we're going to start with this piece of cardstock here. I've got a white piece of cardstock and I am going to cut. Let's see. I'm going to cut this design like this. <clears throat> let's see how I'm going to do this. I actually cut a floral banner because I want to do the banner going on this side. My last card I did on the other side. So this time I want to do it on this side. And I'm going to cut this out right about here. And then this one, I think I'm going to cut right there. So before we go any further, let's cut this out with a smaller die set. We're going to cut it out with Master Layouts 2. Actually, this would be a great card for a 5x7. Do you guys want me to do a 5x7 card tonight? Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a 5x7 because... I know a lot of you love the bigger cards. And I told you all, my mom, my mom always said that the bigger the card, the more the love. And I think some of my five by seven friends love the five by seven. Okay. All right. I see lots of yeses for the five by seven. So for those of you that are saying no, just go ahead and convert this to an A2 size card. But I think it might be fun to do something big because we might... I just dropped the die. We could get a big thing here, and then we're going to be able to get all of this into this card like that. I think it's going to be beautiful. So let's go with five by seven tonight. What the heck? And remember, nothing is set in stone. You can always do it your way. Just kind of take the idea and then run with it whatever size you want. Maybe you want to do a um, slimline card. Maybe you want to do a mini slimline card. You can do all different kinds of things using this technique tonight. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the 5x7 die from Master Layouts 8 with the stitching. 
I'm going to cut that on a big piece of white cardstock first because this is going to be my main panel. And I have to know, goodness, I have to know what size this panel is going to be to do the next part of the die cutting. Okay. And you know what? I don't have my glasses on and I can't even see what I just did, but I know it's dirty. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, it was a little dusty from my plate, but so there we've got that nice little stitching around the perimeter. You don't have envelopes for a five by seven? We do. We sell envelopes for five by seven, just in case you need them out there. But if you, like I said, if you don't want to do this in a five by seven, just go ahead and convert it. Master layouts eight is our five by seven master layouts. Okay, so I will be posting again about the live on Friday, and that is going to be noon central time. And one o'clock. Eastern time. Simon says stamp is in the Eastern time zone. So whenever I share their graphics, it always says Eastern time. And I always show central time graphics. So, okay. All right. So let's look at this one. I am going to use the plain die now from Master Layouts 8. And I am going to cut that out using the plain one. And the one thing that I do like about the five by seven cards is number one, it is a bigger card. So it does feel a little bit more substantial. Number two, it gives you more space to write. And when I send cards to people, sometimes I cut two of those out at once. That is one powerful die right there. I'll tell you. Um, I, you know, if you, if you're sending something to somebody that you haven't seen for a while, you may want to have a little bit more to say, gives you a little more space. It's still not a big size. This isn't very big, but it is bigger than the A2, of course. And then, you know, just sometimes the bigger dies, you can get more stuff on your card. You can get more florals. Like if I wanted to, for example, if I wanted to do a full blown kind of wreathy thing like this, I can get that whole thing on there and then put a greeting strip across the center. So it is kind of fun once in a while to break out that master layout eight die set. And we do, like I said, we do carry the five by seven envelopes. So, and they're white. We just carry white. I mean, we could carry other colors, but I think white is good because not everybody makes a lot of five by sevens. And then if you only have a couple colors, you're kind of bound to those colors and white goes with everything. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of white card stock because I think I'm going to do a white card base with this. I could change my mind. But for the five by seven card, you want to cut your card stock down to 10 by seven. So 10 by seven. And then you're going to score that at the five inch mark. Now see how it's a little bit longer than my score buddy. That's okay. I'm going to score it at the five inch mark and I'm going to go about halfway down. And then I'm just going to turn it, go back to that five inch mark and finish it off. And I like to give it a little extra scoring just to make sure I get a good crease. And then fold that in half. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my five by seven card base and you can see the way the master layouts lays on here really nicely. Gives it that nice framed out card. Okay. Yep, something a little different tonight. So now I'm going to, I cut, I already cut one of these from, from the curved floral die set. Cut one of those. I could use two, but I really want to use this. So I'm going to lay this out where I would want it. And I'll tell you what other bundle I'm going to use tonight. 
I'm going to use the fluttering fall. I want to do a butterfly. Yes, I'm going to definitely be doing make and takes and I'll be sitting right there pretty much all day except for the few times when I have to run to the bathroom, <laughs> which, you know, could be more than a few times, but we'll see. So I'm going to pick a butterfly. I'm not sure which butterfly is going to look good. So I'm going to try them all here. That's kind of big. So maybe I'll use this smaller, more gentle butterfly. I think I'm going to do that. Okay. And you see what this is going to create? It's going to create the swirly look of movement. So we'll have this butterfly here, and then we'll have the movement here. Now I'm going to cut this butterfly as well, because I like to do all my stenciling on my die cut pieces. I don't like to stencil on the paper and then die cut them later. I feel like I have a better shot of getting it nice and even if I do it this way. So let me get the die cutting machine back in. And then I'm going to place this again right about here like that. Now, if I want to check it again, I can do that because it's always good to check twice before you cut. And if that floral goes a little bit off like that, then that butterfly is going to go right here and we'll pop that up a little bit higher. Okay. So we're going to use these little dots to create the movement. And then I thought tonight I would use, I know you guys asked me to use purples and I could use purples, but I also thought it would be really pretty to use um, some blues and dark blues. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that just look like movement? I love the way this looks. And remember, you can just do cool backgrounds too with this. So if you wanted to put another one over here, you could put one here and you could do the opposite and have one up here like that. And then you could have that same swirl pattern just going up the center of your card and then maybe put a butterfly in the center. So lots of fun ways to use it. I'm not done. I'm going to be using this die set for a long time. Get ready to be sick of it because many years. And these, don't these look like enamel dots? So if you want enamel looking dots that coordinate with your colors, you can ink blend and then cut these out and have all these different size dots that are very easy to pick up with your jewel picker. You know, they're easy to pick up and put on your card. So can you see it on there? I hope you can. So that's another fun thing that you can do. Or like I said last time, you can save all of these and use them as shaker card fill. Just have a little bowl nearby and just keep filling them up as you're making cards. And then at some point you're gonna have nice shaker fill could look like snow. Dots are always fun. Oh, I do need to cut my butterfly. I don't wanna cut it out of this. So let me get one more piece of white cardstock here somewhere. I have a lot of it, but I wanna make sure that I'm finding a smaller one. So I'm gonna cut this butterfly out now. Oh, the jewel pickers are stateside. They're still clearing customs, but they are coming back. And we ordered a ton of them this time. So there's a lot coming in. We ordered way more, the way we, we order, just so you guys know the method we use, the way we order is, we look at the waiting list and then we order about a third more than what's on the waiting list. So it's always a good idea to get on the waiting list because you guys get the email the second they go back in stock. And um, that's really helpful for us if you're on the waiting list, because then we know how much to order and we know how many of you want it. All right. So I'm going to tape this down with just a little bit of tape. So are we doing purples tonight or are we doing my blue idea? I wanted this to be a very soft and subtle card tonight. So I'm happy to do the purples. Let's find them. This is another thing that's taking absolutely forever to come back in stock is the lilacs. But, oh, you want blue? Oh, more blues? I see people saying blue, more blue. 
The colors I was going to use for blue were ocean mist, and then I was going to add a little blue denim on top. And I think that would be a gorgeous color combination. Boy, we need, Tom, we need to set up some kind of voting thing where they can vote for their colors so we can actually see live how many. Oh, gosh. I'm just looking at your comments. Okay. Purple and yellow are your favorite. All right. Okay, purple. Okay, some people are like saying purple more than once. I'll go with purple tonight. I'll go with blue another time. So I'm going to get the stencil out here for the butterfly. Now this layering stencil set is really a fun little stencil set and it's very easy to use, but it's almost impossible to use if you don't do your die cutting first. And I'll tell you why, because you're never going to put the antennas in the right place. So you definitely want to die cut it first and then you're going to be able to see exactly where to line everything up. I am really having my own personal weather pattern going tonight. Woo! You know, it doesn't take long. It gets a little warm in Wisconsin. I complain all winter long. Oh gosh, I don't want it to be. I don't, I hate this cold. I hate this cold. And then we get one warm day and I'm like, can we turn the air on? <laughs> I'm pretty bad. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love all your purples. Okay. And you know, I, I'm trying, I'm trying. Let me grab my brush that I use for this. And I think I have a lighter one too. Okay. So my flowers and my butterfly are both, yes, a hot flash. Whew. Yes. So my butterfly and my flowers are all going to be purples. And then instead of doing that bright jelly bean green that I usually like to do, I'm going to go with the spruces because I'm going to make this card very, very like simple and soft because I think it would make a really good sympathy card. Okay. So I'm starting with the light lilac and I'm going to get some light lilac in here. And I know I'm catching the edges and that's okay. Kind of like to catch the edges. If you go in the opposite direction, you'll catch the other edges. And that's the light lilac. That is just such a pretty, hey, you know what, guys? It's a blue purple, right? <laughs> so I'm not like, I know everybody wanted, some of you wanted blue, some of you wanted purple. I feel like we've made a great compromise here going with the lilacs because they are a blue purple. Also, I can't wait till lilac season. My lilacs are going to bloom and I can't wait. All right, now I'm going to use the masks and fillers and instead, instead of using the normal butterfly stencil that would go on top of this, this is the normal butterfly stencil. It's adorable. It really is. It has dots. Oh my gosh. Should we use this one? Cause it has dots. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go with the medium. We're going to use this because I saw it and I like it but we might even add some little dots in the center. Let's just see. Let's see what we can do. That is so cute. Oh my gosh, the dots. I didn't even think how the dots would go with the other dots. So we're gonna use the medium lilac in here. I'm gonna work those into the edges. It's kind of a blue purple. I just want everybody to be happy. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, we're, we're sticking with that. And then now I can take this off and I'm going to do the final stem. And see, this is another thing. You're, you're able to line that stem up and you're able to see which one goes with what because you see that? you know that's not going to work. Now, if you just want to stencil butterflies all over your paper and make a background, you can mix and match these bodies with the different sets of wings. Oh, purple. Lori, I think that's the word of the day. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to do this in black. Maybe I can even do it in dark lilac. No, I'll do it in black. Got to have that little touch of black in there. So let me line that up and let me get my tape. But you can see if you tried to, 
to do this without cutting it out first, all you would have to be is a quarter of an inch off and you'd never be able to cut it with the die cut. So with the die. So always, always cut these out first. So I'm going to do some black. Hello and welcome everybody. It's great to see all of you here. Oh, we're busy tonight. I really, we'd love to see you. All right. Fill in this body with some black onyx. And I'm going gentle. I'm not going super hard because I don't want to squish ink underneath. It'll give me a little bit of a sharper image if I go with a light touch and just keep going until it looks solid. Okay, so there is my butterfly. Alrighty, now we're going to move over to the flowers. So here are my stencils, and I'm going to do that same color combination. Where is my, where's the name? Ooh, I have this backwards, don't I? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, so I'm lining that up, just like I said before, down here and then up near the berries. Can I use the same tape? I think I can. Let's get the other piece. And then once again, we're gonna get that light lilac. And we're I was gonna do a plaid for this video tonight, but I feel like with the dots here and the dots on this part of the card, I feel like we definitely need dots on this one. We'll get to the plaid next time. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see you here tonight. Blurple. Lori's word of the day. Tom, did you think of that? <laughs> I did not. That's Lori's word of the day. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> okay, this is so soft and pretty. And then these berries over here, I'm going to do in the medium lilac. This way, everything is purple, but we'll make those a little darker. So let's get that masks and filler stencil back. And we're going to do the dots again because we got to do dots. It's the only way tonight. Get some dots in there. I really should have done this differently. Let's see. Where was I? Can I do that again? Can I line them up? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I can line them up. Pretty close. I really should have just done this down here. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit down in here. It's not the best way to do it. I should have covered the whole thing, but that's going to work just fine. And then tiny dots. I like to find the tiniest ones for this one right here. And then these will actually be tiny dots in the darker. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Oh, so cute. So cute. Now, I am going to clean this stencil because I feel a disaster looming. And I know you guys know what that feels like in the craft room when you're like, things are going along a little too well. This can't last. So let's clean up as we go so we don't damage anything. And then while I'm here, I'll just clean this butterfly. And I'm going to clean these dots as well. And we'll use that darker sage, not the dark, dark sage, but that medium sage. The light one is really pretty, but I feel like, I'm sorry, not sage, spruce. But I feel like this one is going to be a better color. It's going to be a little bit deeper. And remember I said, I kind of like this idea for possibly a sympathy card. So we're going to go on top of this now. 
and line up all of these leaves. And remember, when you get your bundle, if this stencil doesn't line up, it's not the stencil. They can't cut this stencil wrong because it's cut digitally. So it could possibly be this is just bent a little bit because it's such a delicate stencil and just bend that back into place. So if it doesn't look like it's right, bend it back into place and it should all fit. My Instagram account looks like this is the only stamp set I own. And right now, it's the only one I want to own. <laughs> I'm just having so much fun with it. Not true. I love all our stamps, but I'm having so much fun with this one. With this stencil set and the, uh, and the dies. Okay, so we're giving this the little sage treatment. We're saging. We're not saging. We're sprucing. I have a color in mind for sage. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now, last time, I used a darker green to enhance a couple of the leaves. If I can find it here... Our dark, this is our dark spruce. I'm going to add just a little bit of that onto a couple of leaves. I need to find a, boom, a green brush. Here we go. This one should work. Let's clean it though. It's got a lot of um, jelly bean and fresh asparagus on it. So we'll clean that off. And then we'll ink it up and we'll check the color. Yep, that looks good. Okay, back out just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit more. All right, a little bit of this, and we'll just touch up maybe along the bottoms of some of these. We'll just deepen up the color a little bit along the bottom. I think that's going to be pretty. We'll leave that alone, just these here. That's how you kind of create that layered look or blend it. It's even sometimes better than layering because it looks like you've taken a colored pencil and used Gamsol or, or maybe even a little bit of Copic marker blending. See how that gets nice and deep around the edges? So pretty. This is called Fluttering Fall. But if you don't have this, you can stamp a butterfly. You could stamp a butterfly and then color it in using a little bit of ink and a water brush. Or you can color it with Copics or colored pencils. I'm sure that you can find a match because I do it all the time. I know you guys can do it too. I'm not that brilliant. Okay, now somebody said out there, I forget who it was, but they said they love purple and yellow together. I do too, but I think for this card, I'm going to go with a darker purple here, like the darkest one, because we've used the light lilac and we've used the medium lilac. And I think if we do the accents in dark lilac, I don't think I pulled that ink pad out. Here it is. This is the dark lilac, so it's very, very deep and vibrant. Let me find a purple brush. Here it is. Okay. Now I've lined it up here, so I'm definitely going to do these little flowers, that dark purple. Oh, that looks good. And then... Get some of that darker purple in there. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, yeah. 
I just feel this coming together so nice and so soft. It's a beautiful spring card. The stencil set, Susan, it is called the Curved Floral Layering Bundle. So with it comes the stencil set, it comes the masks and fillers so you can get the dots. You get these two masks, which I'll be demonstrating in another video. And then you get a stamp set that coordinates with it and then you get the two dies so you can cut all of this out. Now I'm not gonna do an overlay die this time. If you're new and you're just watching for the first time, this is what the overlay die looks like. This one gives you that stained glass look or you can do it in white and it's beautiful, or you can do it in another color completely, gold, silver, whatever you want. But I'm just gonna leave it simple tonight, and I am going to accent these flowers in black with a little black pearl, because that's gonna pick up the butterfly, it's gonna pick up this beautiful swirl that we've got going, and I think it's gonna really make it nice. So I'm not gonna worry too much about these dots right here, but I am gonna fill in the rest of this. And this is definitely a gray moment here. Gotta do the gray. Let me line those flower centers up. And then that should be right along the edge. And that just defines the little um, branches because they're not easily defined. Now, I have a little bit of gray left on this brush from my last card. It's very, very subtle. I'm not even going to ink this up. I'm just going to use the gray that's on here. It's very subtle, but it's just enough to fill in these areas. And again, I'm not worried about here. Even if I get a little gray on there, I'm still not going to worry about it because I'm covering it with the black pearls. You see how that just fills that in nicely? You get the details of the branch there. And then it just fills in these empty areas here, which defines that branch, that little stem, I should say, the stem of this little flower. Okay. So we're going full-blown purple. I'm telling you, purple, I got a thing for purple. And I didn't used to have a thing for purple, but this purple just jazzes me so much. Okay, now let's take a look at the card and see what we wanna do. Now there's a couple of things that we can do here. We'll, um, we'll lay it out and we'll look at it and then we'll decide if we wanna take it up to the next level. So we can leave this all black like this and just pop that butterfly right on there. So now you see the movement that you get with that? Isn't that beautiful? Love that movement back up a little bit. It's a big card. Love that movement. And then, you know, he's working his way up toward the beautiful floral design. And we can put our greeting anywhere. We can just stamp a delicate greeting down here, over here. We can do a little strip sentiment. We can do whatever we want. We don't even have to do anything. We can leave the card just like this. And then we can, um, put all the greetings and stuff on the inside, but I just love the flow of all of this. And I feel like a very delicate little greeting. And I keep going back to um, Arjita's new set because I'm actually so jazzed with the greetings on here. I think like a miss you would be really pretty or hello friend right in there would be really pretty. Ha. Oh. You are the wind beneath my wings. If we move this up a little bit, we might be able to fit that in here. It's just got a little sticky on the back because I tacked it down onto my card. <laughs> I heard that, Tom. Huh? I don't know that that will fit though, but wouldn't that be cute? You are the wind beneath my wings. It seems like that'd be such a nice, I don't want to like, I don't want to move him this way. It just doesn't feel right. It really feels like he should be going this way. But if you wanted to do that, here's what you should do. If you wanted to use You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings on your card, stamp it first and then work your die around it because the whole die could have come over this way more and it still would have been beautiful with You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings because there's wings. But this could also be a very pretty get well card. 
birthday wishes would look nice. I think I'm going to stick like, oh, you are so lovely. That would be pretty. I think I'm just going to do hello, friend, because I'm sending this to one of you and you guys are my friends. So I think I'm going to do it that way. Now we're going to my other option here is to do some ink blending and then have that ink blending coming in from underneath. So I'm going to test my theory to see how it looks. And then if we like it, we'll do it. And if we don't like it, we'll save it for something else. And it's just another idea, kind of a step up idea, but we're going to use this um, medium lilac. And then we're also going to use the spruce in here. So let's do that. Now, purple and green do not generally blend well together, but we're gonna see what they do. I'll tell you what, what would make them blend together. If we add a little blue in the center between them. So you can see I'm just doing the blotchiest blending I can do, <laughs> not on purpose, but I'm not really worrying about my pressure and I'm not worried about anything because you're going to barely see this. It's just going to look like beautiful color under there. So I'm going to just add that accent color. I'm going to add a little turquoise C. Now I know it's not in the rest of it, but it's going to make that spruce blend a little bit better because if you put green and purple together, you are going to get brown. But if you add a little bit of blue in there, maybe even a different blue, Maybe more of a powder blue. Let me get that powder blue. I'm going to do powder blue because this blue I think is going to work better in here. So we'll use powder blue. I'll get rid of that. I'll clean this brush because this has dark on it. And then we're going to go with the powder blue. Just blend a little of that on there. And then we're going to go with that medium spruce. Is this spruce? I can't even tell anymore. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> All right, Tom, while I'm blending, do you have any words of the day? Can you even compete with Lori tonight? <laughs> it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat that one. With her blurple? <laughs> It is hard to beat that one. So let me just take a look at this. I think that's going to be plenty. Now, all we're going to do is look at this. We are not going to um, commit here, but we're just going to look at it and see if we like the look. We might like that. What do you think? I got to know. I got to know. See how the blue just worked with the the um spruce do you like that so should we go with that okay we're gonna go with that and then we'll just have those little black accents we'll have the center of the butterfly we'll have the little pearls on there and we'll have the pop pop of black for the greeting and around the outside i think that's gonna look really nice okay all right guys we did it together we took the shot sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and tonight we got lucky so again, I think I told you this before, just find the spot that you like the best. Like if you want a little more green, go up a little higher. If you want a little deeper purple, go down a little bit. I think I'm gonna go right about to the edge here. And I'm not worrying about it too much. I'm just gonna tape it on. So just don't put tape over the dots. Just put it around the dots a little bit like that and then you can line it up to where you want it so i think right there is going to do it for me the ink is a little wet still but definitely want to see that sage let me move it down here this way yeah i wanted to get a little more sage in there spruce <laughs> All right. 
So now I'm going to tape this all. I did like the black too. The black was very striking. So if you liked the way the black looked, just go ahead and, and do the black. Just leave the black because the black was really, really striking. But I did want to show you because I thought it would be pretty. And, you know, maybe for a sympathy card, the color underneath there would be a little bit more gentle. And maybe for a more art deco feel, it would be really cool. Like if you did all the flowers and bright reds and pinks, why can't I see? I have to get my head in here. My head, my whole head in here. Um, if you did like the tropical colors, the bright reds and pinks and oranges, and then that pop of black would be so spectacular. I am really having trouble, but I think it's gonna be better than horrible. So we're gonna leave it. <laughs> You're right, Renee. Tom has not done the word of the day. I think he's a little intimidated tonight. <laughs> but what do you think, Tom? Do you have anything? Well, I have a few. You have a few? <laughs> Let's throw a few out there and see. Okay, so the word... Um, i got to do this over here so I can see. Sorry. Okay. The bigger the... The bigger the piece of cardstock, the harder it is for me to see it. I got to stand right over it. Okay, submerging. Submerging is the word of the day, one of the words of the day. And that's that describes when somebody um, is pulling onto a highway and they're really bad at it. <laughs> and they don't get up to speed and they hold up the whole line. That's sub quality. That's submerging. <laughs> Can't merge. Can't. That's good. I like that one. That's good. We never think it's us. <laughs> no, we don't. But <laughs> but sometimes I'm a submerger. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Tom. They said you should start posting these in the group when you're done. Yeah. Have a collection. I like that one. And let's see what what else do we have here? How about um, we're gonna uh, pop this one word. up? So assault alternative. Why don't they just call it a alternative? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> right. Assault alternative. Very good. I really like that one. <laughs> So I'm adding just some foam tape back here. And if you're new, if you're a newer card maker and you have foam tape and it gets sticky all over your scissors, if you have any release paper from something that you already used, like this is the release paper from the Masking Magic strips, I just save these and then I put my strips of foam tape on here. It makes it easy to cut. Oh my gosh, I love that one. Saltternative. <laughs> what? Tom, they want you to write a dictionary. <laughs> I'm just going to pop this one down here to make sure I don't get it in the way. And I like it to extend a little bit outside of the black. Okay, and then this one I'm going to pop up as well. Oh my goodness. Is that it for you today, Tom? It's all I got for today. That's all you got? Okay. <laughs> We're all waiting. We didn't know. Okay, and then this is going to go right here. I'm going to do a little bit of space just so you can see that dot. I did cover one dot. I'm going to make these a little 3D just by pulling them up a little bit. And then I'm going to add the greeting, and then I'm going to add a few little disco ball sequins around here just to make this all shimmer. And then that's, and then I've got to also, I've got to add my black pearls because we need that little pop of black. All right, big card, big card. And you are so lovely. Hello friend. I'm gonna use hello friend again. 
I know I used it in my last card or the card before that, but I think it's a good one to use for this. And I don't often put my greeting on this side of the card. Like, I don't know why. It's not like I'm driving and I have to stay to the right, right? I can put the greeting anywhere I want. I don't know why I don't think of that. Stamping on the right. Like in the United States, you can only stamp the greeting on the right. And then in the Caribbean, you do it on the left. <laughs> okay. So I'm inking this up with an ink cube here. This is a well-loved greeting already. A little bit more. Hopefully it's staying in the same place. I'm nervous. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Love that. Very delicate. But it would be a very beautiful card as a sympathy card, I think, with these colors because they're very soft. Not that, like, I'm excited to make sympathy cards. I'm not. But the thing is, is that when I need them, it's usually at a time when I don't really feel much like making them. So it's always a good kind of card for, for us to make in advance, right? All right. So let's do a little of these disco ball sequins. And I'm going to use tiny ones, I believe. Maybe I'll use some bigger ones in the middle. Kind of follow the pattern. I'm going to do, go in the middle here. Start there. We'll do another one here. Another one here. Another one there. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll start here, 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 and here. Just to add some sparkle. So who's excited? Who wants to make this card? I do. I want to make it again. I want to try it in different colors. knocked one off. You know what? Knocked one off onto the other one. You do one more little touch of glue there and I'm going to do one more down here and I'm going to do one more down here because I like the look of the five better. I'm not going to ruin this card at the last minute here. I'll do another small one here. I think I have glue on my tip. Let me peel that off. Sometimes, oh, I felt it come off. Sometimes if you get glue on the tip of your um, jewel picker, your pick and stick tool, it'll give you a little bit of a hard time releasing. My favorite Rena videos are when she comes and she starts doing sequins and they don't work. <laughs> and I'm feeling Rena's pain tonight. I put that one too close. But you know, I need more tiny ones. Ooh, that's pretty. Sometimes a sequin falls in a spot that you th didn't think you would want one. I want to use these really tiny micro ones. Sometimes they're hard to turn over though. I gotta pick a few more out of here. The tiniest. Is that a tiny one? 
That's tiny. Not as tiny as that one, though. I want it to look good in the picture. So I'm going to keep going until I find the right ones. I have all my... There we go. I have all my micro disco ball and my regular disco ball sequins mixed together. So it's not always easy to find the one I want. This is a really tiny baby. And I saw one more. Here she is. Okay. I know I missed this one up here. Just let me even them out a little bit. And then I need one more there. This is like the most precision thing I've done in a while. Oh yeah, it's worth taking the time to do it. Okay, can you see them in there shining? Can you see those, Tom? I can. Okay, you don't want that in there. Now let's put the two little black dots on here. And I feel like this is gonna finish this off really nicely. There's sequins everywhere. <laughs> okay, here we go. Find a medium one. Here's one. And let's do a small one on the next one because that's a tinier little spot. Plus, there's a small one right here to make it easier. There we go. So I feel like we needed that little touch of black in there. And there is the finished card. Ta-da! I think it'd be fun too, if you had the patience to fill in a couple of these holes, maybe with, or to do the dew drops, you know, the, I have them somewhere, but they're the big clear, like these things. They look like dew. Maybe to fill in some of the holes with that, you know? They would really look cool over that. I don't know. Can can they see that, Tom, that dew drop on there? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool, too, because it kind of acts like a little magnifying glass. So there's so many different fun things. And, yes, I did mix my dew drops in with my disco ball sequence. So if you don't think that's a nightmare, <laughs> you haven't lived until you've mixed all clear things together and you're trying to see them with not great eyesight. That's me. All right, is it, is. Is okay. it time to set these babies free? Yes, but we have two. We're Into giving away two tonight. So we're giving this one away, but we're also giving the one that we made on Thursday's premiere. So there All we go. Right. Look at those. Are you ready? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Drum roll, please. Okay, which one are we giving away first? Let's give away the thankful. Okay. We'll give away this one first. So the winner of this one is Kathleen Simmington. Kathleen. Kathleen, congratulations. Yeah, got it. All right. That one I used the white pearls. And I don't know if you noticed this. I said it on Thursday, but I I had stenciled that in black. And when you put the white pearls over it, it turns a gorgeous silver. It's really cool. Okay. You got to see it in real life. Kathleen, you're going to see it in real life. It's coming. Okay, card number two. Card number two goes out with a flutter to Abby Stone. Abby, Abby. congratulations, Abby. This one's coming home to you. <laughs> all right, so if you want a prize tonight, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and we will get these out to you. Well, everybody, this was so much fun. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's card and this uh, technique for the lots of dots. If you aren't on the waiting list for those and you want them, put your name on the waiting list because you guys will get the email before everybody else finds out that they're back in stock because the minute it goes in and we hit um, save, you all get the email. So, and also check your spam and your junk box and anything that you see in there from Gina K Designs, click on it's not junk 
so that it shows up in your inbox and you don't miss it. All right. So Tom and I will be back on Thursday for another fun craft or noon. This one will be live. We'll be here in the studio. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video or maybe a foil at Friday. We'll see. I don't know yet. It all depends on what the inspiration, what inspiration hits me. But anyway, in the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.